This machine right here is the Trunksy X5S. Oh boy. The X5S is one of many large volume aluminum extrusion 3D printers from Tron XY, or Trunksy, a Far East 3D printer manufacturer in China. This is a Core XY setup 3D printer that boasts a 330 by 330 by 400 millimeter build volume. It comes with an MK8 style extruder with a Bowden tube, a part cooling fan, dual Z lead screws, and it does have a heated build platform. Now this video can't technically be a review because I could not print on this machine straight out of the box. So this is going to be more of a walkthrough of the experiences that I've had with this printer. And let's kick this whole thing off with some video footage from the live build we did of this machine. Do you see that? What you saw there is when I went to tension the belts, the X motor mount was made of acrylic and it snapped and came off the machine while I was trying to build it. Fortunately, one of our subscribers had a fix for this. After that video, a man named Cliff sent me an email and he offered to machine two aluminum parts for replacements for those motor mounts. Cliff, you saved this machine. It was much appreciated, proving once again that the 3D printing community is awesome. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. We might not have the most subscribers, but we have the best subscribers. Now on to the next issue. So after that, I was able to print some small items with some success, like this balloon boat and this faceless model, although I did drop and break it. The aluminum heat plate was so bent that you really couldn't print anything much larger than that. You'd end up digging the nozzle into the center of the bed or being way too far away at the corners. I did bend it back some in my vise, and I ended up spending almost $50 on a glass sheet to go on top of it to be able to continue the testing. Now onto the next issue. The belts that they give you with this kit are the shiny type and they're reinforced with metal strands. These are almost impossible to tension, especially with the system of zip ties that they give you on this machine. So I ordered all new belts for this machine and I replaced it all and got it tensioned in as good as I could. But the engineering decisions made on this machine aren't going to help you out in any way. All of the belt idlers are just a bolt with some bearings and some washers sandwiching the whole thing together. That's not going to let you achieve any kind of accuracy whatsoever. So after the bed was somewhat level, I started out small with some vase mode prints and then I ramped it up from there. Although the Z end stop is triggered by a screw with a nut on top of it. So every time you home, there's always just a little bit of slop left. So you have to manually level pretty much for every print. But the first prints really didn't look great, but not that awful either. So I started off with a couple of spanner hands rockets in vase mode. You can see it's just one shell thickness. It doesn't look terrible, but not good by any means. So then I took that same model and I just scaled it up. I wanted to try to max out the build volume of this machine. So this one's supposed to be 400 millimeters high, but when you get to around 370 millimeters, the Z carriage bottoms out on the main board mount. Another great engineering decision. So this was a failure. So now let's get to all these Adelinda dragons that you see on this table. All of these are failures except one and they're all at 250% scale. And I hit an issue on this model that I have never hit before and I had a really hard time figuring it out. So I tried a couple of the dragons. All of them failed when it started the head of the model. And it's not in the same place twice, but it is kind of close. So after two of the Adelinda models, I came up with this model. I was trying to test if it was something specific to a Z height, but this model actually came out pretty good other than it's a vase mode model and it has a whole lot of ripples in it. So now at this time, I'm on Adelinda try number three. So that was a failure, so I came up with this model. This is almost 400 millimeters high and almost a whole roll of filament, but I was trying to test if the size of the model made a difference or the size of the G code made a difference. And this one came out pretty good. It's got a rough texture on it, but it did complete successfully. So at this point, I'm kind of stumped. I did a Minecraft model. It came out pretty decent, although it did curl quite a bit. I also did a Matter Hacker's fill at somewhat size. It did curl a little bit, but it still came out pretty decent. So then, I go for Adeline to try number four. That would be this headless dragon right here. So then I start to think, maybe it's something with the head of this model at this scale. I've sliced it a couple of times now and there's no issues in the slicer, so I'll just print the head. 
the head and the wings come out just fine. So I take another break from Adelinda and I do this very large Moon City model. It did fail, but this time we're getting some really crazy layer shift. So now I go look at the voltage that's on all the stepper drivers. So the voltages were all over the map, and the X and Y voltages weren't even close to the same. So I made those almost identical, and I stepped up the voltage, and I tried again. This time, another Moon City. So again, another failure. But now we're seeing something else. It's just stopping at random spots in the model and rebooting the board. And then giant faceless model, same thing, just stops at a random position. So up to this point, I had been using Octoprint with this machine. And I thought, well, maybe there's some sort of serial inconsistency on this board in between it and Octoprint. So I'll just go back to using the SD card for prints. And then that enters Adelinda number five. What do you know? Another headless dragon. So at this point, I'm more than frustrated. I'm just wasting plastic and there's just something wrong with that Adelinda model. I just can't get it quite right. So I decide to go with one more faceless model from the SD card, and I get this. My first really large successful print. And this thing actually looks pretty good. So it's not the best print that I've ever seen, but given all the issues that I've had with this printer, it's looking pretty good. The lines aren't stacked all that evenly, but it's because of the inconsistency with the mechanicals on the printer, but I'm pretty satisfied at this point. So after that, I did try one of these pyramids in vase mode because I do really like this model and it came out probably better than faceless did. So at this point, I'm kind of happy with the results that I'm seeing. So I just can't leave well enough alone and I go back to the Adelinda model. And now we're getting a separate issue altogether. We can't get over about this high. So I tried three separate times and I never got over this height on the model again. So this issue was really hard to diagnose because the printer would just stop in random spots. And it was usually after the printer had been printing for more than 12 hours. But on the last run, I did manage to catch it when it stopped and see what was actually happening. The main board was completely rebooting whenever that issue occurred. So now I know we have a problem here. So I just so happened to have a Duet Wi-Fi board that I'm gonna use on another project. So I whipped up a quick board mount and I installed it and I wanted to try it again. Because if any board can make this machine work, it's this one. This is some serious overkill for a printer of this status. And success. And I finally have my 250% Adelinda off my Tronxy X5S. I felt like this was a real win here. This is filaments.ca, silk blue, and it looks really good, especially coming off of that printer. And with that successful print, I'm not going to tempt fate and even try one more thing. In fact, I hope I never print on this 3D printer again. I did want to mention that this printer comes with an LCD screen, but it's not compatible with a Duet Wi-Fi, so I just removed it. I also understand that these companies go through a lot of different iterations quickly, and they might have fixed a lot of these issues on the newer model, but if I were you, I wouldn't even try it. There's a lot better kits out there, even if you're just using the parts for a different project. Just stay away from it altogether. This machine was provided by GearBest free of charge for the purpose of this review. No money has exchanged hands, and all opinions expressed are my own. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Now it's time for this main board to go in the scraps bin.